All right, what's up guys? So I'm outside, I've got my Sony a7 III, I'm gonna take a few pictures, and I'm gonna go ahead and take those inside, and this video's gonna be twofold. So number one, I'm gonna be editing photos in Adobe Lightroom on my Surface Book 2. So you're gonna see how the Surface Book 2 handles um, with editing photos inside of Lightroom, and number two, my workflow and how I edit pictures inside of Lightroom. So let's go ahead and take some photos, and then head inside, and we'll open up Lightroom. Okay, so before we get in Lightroom here, I just put in my SD card. I want to show you uh, the performance of the Microsoft Surface Book 2 and how I usually do my workflow. So one of the first things I do is if it's a special occasion photo shoot, I will probably import the photos to a folder somewhere on my PC. But just for random photos that I went and took, what I do is just import them directly into Lightroom. So. Lightroom just opened, so I'm just going to go straight to import photos and videos. And it should pull up my my uh, SD card here. So all I'm going to do here is just click import and it's going to do all of the new photos that are not in my library. So we're just going to click import and we'll let this go. Okay, so the card was just ejected and we imported 88 photos. So. That was the amount of time it took to import the 88 photos. And real quick, everything I shoot is a raw file. So you'll see the title of the file is a .arw. And that is shot on my Sony a7 III with a 16 to 35 millimeter f4 lens. So once we get into Lightroom, I've got my photos here. I'm just gonna click on develop. And what I do is I will typically just kind of scan through the photos and find which ones I like. That one's pretty cool. So when I get to a photo that I like, what I'll do is I'll right click on it and set a rating. And for this one, it's, it's cool, but it's what I would rate it about a three. Like a five has to be like, I really have to like it. So this one's pretty cool as well. We're gonna go ahead and set it a rating at a four or three as well. And we're just gonna keep going through till we pick the photos that I want to edit for this video. So all that setting the rating does for me is it kind of is a visual cue right down here in the collection that hey, I like this photo enough to edit it. So once I get them rated, that's when I'll go ahead and start editing them so I can go back one by one. Typically I will rate them, but I don't always rate them. Sometimes I'll just kind of edit as I go along if I find a picture I like. So let's go ahead and start diving into the ones that I chose to edit. Okay, so the first photo here that we're gonna edit is of my son. He's uh, squirting this um, water gun. Um, real quick, the stats on this are ISO 125. This was shot at 16 millimeters with a f4.0 at a 1 1,000th 1, shutter speed. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of crop this photo. My son is a little bit um, off-centered, so what I'm going to do is put him right in the center. And the last thing I'd like to do is just kind of, if there's a horizon line, I'm going to look to make sure that things look about as straight as possible. So if I follow this line across the middle, that right there looks pretty even. And my sun is now mostly in the middle here if we go a little bit tighter. Okay, so now we have a nice solid platform, um, a nice straight horizon line to work with. So the next thing I do is click auto. Now, I don't always leave auto as, you know, the settings that I'm going to use, but I do like to click it just to see what it did for the picture. So um, on most keyboards, right above the enter or the return key, you'll see the backslash uh, key. And on the backslash key, if you hit it, you'll get it before and after. So what this did was it brought our exposure up, our contrast down, highlights down, shadows up, whites up, blacks down. This is pretty common. Um, if you're shooting in a bright environment. So I kind of like what this is. A lot of times I, I will make it maybe not so harsh. Um, I'm gonna back the, the shadows off a little bit. Um, I honestly don't mind the rest of the settings the way that they are, but the clarity, I'm usually rolling off the clarity just a little bit. Um, it depends on the photo. I don't like an image to be over sharp in most situations. Um, it just makes it look a little unnatural. And with my editing, I'm typically trying to go for 
um, the most natural representation of what my eyes saw when I took the photo. So I'm trying to more or less just enhance or bring out the best of what was already happening that day. So I kind of like to use the expression, you can't polish a turd. Technically you can, and there's evidence of that on the internet, but the moral of it is that you really want to get the best quality image you can out of camera. And then in editing, you're just trying to enhance it to bring out the best of the photo, the best lighting, the best colors. And that's kind of my theory when I'm editing a photo. So the next thing I like to do is I, I typically will skip the tone curve. A lot of people like to do an S curve. It depends. If I don't get where I want to go when I get down to the colors, then I will go back there. But after I do my adjustments up here, the next thing I do is go straight down to color. So on this color tab here, what I'll just do is start off in the reds. And what I'll do here is we'll look at my um, slide it a little bit up and down both ways just to see where I like it. I actually like the color of this one with the reds dropped a little bit. It kind of brought out some of the, the car color. Orange, we'll go over to orange on the luminance and this will affect of course my son's face. I'm going to drag it down just a little bit because his face actually has a lot of sun. The sun was peering right on his face. And then we're going to jump right over to yellow and do the same thing. And I like this rolled off just a little bit for this photo. And then we're going to go into green. And again, I like it rolled off. And we're going to go into our aqua. Not a whole lot of aqua, but you can see it right on the lower skyline there. And now in blue, I'm a big fan of deep blues. Um, you know, living in Florida, we, we get some nice blue skies. So I typically will roll off the luminance quite far depending on uh, the sky. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit that backslash key again so you can get a quick before and after. So you can see here's before and when you initially first looked at the photo it was pretty nice but there's no comparison on the before and the after of these. I'm pretty happy with this photo. I'm not going to go crazy you know with uh, editing this one any further. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next photo here is of my son driving his little tractor. So we're going to go straight over to the crop. We're going to change this over to original. And mostly here, this is pretty, pretty good where it's at. He's slightly off center. So I'm going to bring him right into where I like it to be in the center of this photo. And then we're going to check that horizon line, like I said. For the most part, this looks pretty good right where it's at. Um, I don't think there's much of a need to change the rotation of the photo. So we'll click done. And now we have a nice centered object in the picture to work with. Let's go ahead and click on auto and see where this goes with this picture. Again, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where this is at. Um, I'm actually going to bump the contrast back a little bit. I'm not crazy about the exposure either. I think it's a little too bright for my liking, so I'm going to put it right back at just zero. Shadows, I'm going to bring them down just a little bit. I'm okay with the whites and the blacks where they're at. I'm going to roll off that uh, clarity just a little bit. I'm going to go down to our colors. So basically, I just move these around to my liking. You may, you know, like a completely different look from what I go for my photos, and that's okay. My idea with this is just basically to show you how I edit photos. Maybe you can learn something or pick something up that you didn't do before. Or maybe you think the way that I edit these photos is garbage, but either way, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so if we take a little closer look at my son here, we can go to that backslash key and look at before and after. So here's your before and after. You can just see a lot more detail and color. And I think a large part of this, obviously, like I said, is the fact that you try to get the best shot out of camera as possible. And 
Shooting in RAW, of course, helps you pull a lot of data, a lot more of the highs and the lows and the colors out of the camera. So this one looks pretty good. Let's move on to the next one. So here's our shot of the cow. Uh, as far as cropping goes, I think this one looks fine. Horizon line, everything looks pretty straight. The cow actually looks very centered to the photo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip the crop. So we're gonna go straight to auto. And again, I think straight out of the box, auto did a pretty good job. I'm just gonna do a quick before and after, before, after. So over on the right side of the cow here, you can see a lot more of the color that came out. I'm actually pretty happy with the way that that looks as far as our adjustments up here. And then all I'm going to do is go down to the color and we'll take a look at what we can do with these different colors and the luminance here. Um, again, I like a lot of vivid, deeper colors in a lot of my photos. So I'm oftentimes dragging the luminance of certain colors down. I don't boost them a whole lot. It really just depends on the situation. Um, I don't mind a bright green like this. It actually looks pretty good. It really just goes with, with what you're looking to um, get out of the photo. So I think the brighter green actually looks better in this case. So the blue, hopefully we can pull out some of that skyline. Yeah, see the sky on this picture is just, it's too, it's too washed out. We can't really pull it back. So the luminance doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I don't want to drag it too low because then this white fence actually starts looking too blue. And there's really nothing happening on the purple scale and not much with the magenta. So we'll do a quick before and after, before, after. Let's go ahead and edit one more just for the sake of things here. So we'll click on our crop. And I'm not really looking to crop anything out of here. Again, I'm looking at the horizon line. So this one's nice and straight. It's one of the things, like I said, I really like to keep an eye on because that crooked horizon line will really just ruin a shot. Let's click on auto. So there's a lot of colors in this one. It brought out a lot. Let's do a before and after. As you can see, a ton of shadows in the trees and in the water, and now you can really see it. So that's a good platform to now enhance our colors a little bit. I got drug down on accident. So let's go to red. Nothing really happening in the red, but we should get some orange and yellow for sure. Drop down the orange a little bit. And let's get that green going. Okay, so let's take a look at the before, after. You see a lot of shadows down here at the bottom of the water. Now you can see those lily pads where before it was all pretty dark and washed out. So now that we have our pictures edited, typically what I'm going to do is select them all by holding down the control button on the PC and clicking each one that I edited. And all this is going to do is highlight each photo that was edited. Each edited photo is selected. What I like to do with my workflow is click on file, export, and I actually will always export my photos to my OneDrive. I have a folder set up in here called Picture Edits. So I select there, and then what I do is make sure that under File Settings, Image is set to JPEG, Quality is up to 100, Color Space, sRGB, and we're gonna click Export. So we have exporting seven files up here at the top. Okay, so all of the photos are now exported. And what's cool about this is if I go into my OneDrive, not only does it sync across all the PCs that I have, but it'll actually show up on my phone as well. So if we give this just a second to sync, I can already see the photos right down in this row right here that it's syncing. Once they have green check marks next to them that they've finished syncing, then I can open the OneDrive app 
either on another computer or on my phone and I can download those photos and save them. So typically I'll put them in OneDrive and then open the OneDrive on my phone and download the photos to my phone, which then I can text or share or email um, on social media to other people. Okay, so if we open up OneDrive, go down into the picture edits folder. So here are our photos right here at the top that we edited. So I'm just gonna tap on this one. And then up in the corner, we'll click download. And then it'll show up in the camera roll. And it'll be a nice high resolution photo. That looks really good. And like I said, I can share this with my family or I can post it on social media or I can send it to email. And that's the gist of my workflow. All right, thank you for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed how I edit photos inside of Lightroom. And as far as the Surface Book 2 goes, it's obviously phenomenal. I have the 15 inch model. I have a couple other videos on my channel if you guys wanna check that out. It handles editing in Lightroom really well. I love the calibration of the colors on the Surface Book 2 screen. For my eyes and the way that I like to edit photos, I feel like I've got it dialed in to where I like it. So when I export the photos from here, they look good across d different devices on different screens or if I decide to print those pictures. So my Surface Book 2 has plenty of horsepower. I have the i7 model with 16 gigs of RAM and it has an NVIDIA graphics card in there. So um, it handles everything I throw at it really well. I'm extremely happy with the performance of it. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Before you leave, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that way you guys know when I upload my next video. And as always, we will see you guys in the next video. See ya.